Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Hearthstone the Arena! So, we broke even! That's all that matters so far in the whole scheme of things, I suppose. Because seven wins! I, 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 I think seven wins, although... Putting it simply, as you guys know, it, it is the point where you break even, get... Or you should, in theory, get all the money that you spent, if not a little bit more, um, back from completing the arena. But even with that said, I think seven wins is pretty damn impressive, especially with only one loss at this point. So obviously that in no way means the end for this deck. Who knows, this this deck could go on so much farther, could go onwards to such greatness, become the epic true silver champion deck of, of legends. Like, I'm sure five true silver champions has been done by other people in the arena. I mean, with uh, all the random drafting thing, it's it's kind of like uh, the, the old saying, if you leave uh, a bunch of monkeys in a room with a typewriter, eventually they'll type Shakespeare or record Shakespeare, however the saying goes exactly. I suppose it's all well and good, however I word it. But, um, but yeah, it's one of those things where, like, the chance came up for me. Imagine how how often the the chances come up for other people who have played this game in the past. But still, like it's so cool and awesome having this deck. I, I hope it goes to greatness, like it already has. Our one loss ha was against a mage, though. And as we always, yes. Okay. If I lose to this person, <laughs> it'll be a pretty damn honorable loss. Losing to someone named Yes is just amazing. Hate getting rid of two card draw cards, but those aren't. Neither of those are ones that I would necessarily want to hold on to, like a true silver champion. They're both very good cards, but if I don't get an early game, those aren't going to save me later on. Uh, and I'm glad I got rid of those because the sand is much, much better. Question is, I, we don't play the Noble Sacrifice now because there's really absolutely no reason to do it. Our, our, the minion that we could put out is very likely to actually survive uh, many minions that this mage could put out on turn two, and actually this mage didn't do anything. So question is, do we go for the Blood Sail Raider, or do we go for a Reinforce? If we do the Reinforce, basically what we're saying is, please hit it with a Fire Blast, but I... I the Blood Sail Raider combo would be really nice, but I think it's better to get um some early game control. Like I, like I mentioned, if we put out the reinforce, basically what we would be doing is saying, "Hey, Mage, uh, Mister or Miss Yes, why don't you go ahead and skip your turn by using a fireball on on the creature I just put out?" Ugh, Scarlet Crusader. That's an incredibly irritating thing to face. What we just put down. So I think we actually want to use a Noble Sacrifice. We could use Noble Sacrifice Reinforce. Obviously that means Scarlet- I mean that, uh, our thing's going to survive, and then we could just take it out with one of our two Silver Champions next turn. Or even better! There's basically no way that the Silver Hand Recruit's gonna survive because it's a mage, they've got Fire Blast. But if it does... Then the Scarlet Crusader- oh, yep, that happens right away. <laughs> That's the one thing that I do really like about the Paladin's ability against a, a mage. Basically, you're not using it like you normally would to put out a, a creature on the board for them to be forced to hit. Basically, you're putting it out on the board to, to say, hey, you're not gonna, you're gonna waste two mana on your next turn just to take out this creature, and you're going to hate it. <laughs> So we got some good board control dominance going right here. We have our weapon, of course, and our Blood Sail Raider chilling down. She's definitely got her worth if, if she dies. If, if the mage decides to pull out a kill card. Oh, damn. It's the one thing that would actually be really, really annoying. Like a counter to a kill card. Hmm. Defender of Arcus is not good right now. There's no reason for that. So I think we have to go Noble Sacrifice and pretty much just wait this turn. Obviously that's sucky because mages get more and more irritating as they go on, seeing as they could use like a Blizzard or um, or a Flame Strike and all that, or a Pyroblast once they get to turn 10. But eh, we're not focusing on a Rushdown deck for sure either. I guess in some regards we are since our middle game is what's strongest for us. But it's nice to know that this mage isn't entirely sure of what he or she wants to do 
Mr. Miss Yes. Let's just, we'll, we'll go my usual thing and call this a female, just because the class is female, you know? So, elegant lady, yes. What, what do you have for us? Oh, okay. Interesting move. I don't really even, like, know how I feel about that. Awesome! He took the bait. That means, obviously, now our two silver champions just gotta take that guy out in one hit. Or we could trade creatures. No reason for that, though, especially since more more likely than anything else, I foresee a Pirate Blast coming. Okay, holy cow! I hate that minion so goddamn much. To the extent that we honestly might use our Argent Commando on this turn, I think that... I think that actually would be a very good idea. Argent Commando to finish that guy off. Our 2-3 two, our two, hits the Novice Engineer. Yeah, I think I'd rather go for board control than an extra 2 damage to his base. And then we use our weapon to finish that guy off because that'll actually heal us for 1 health. Mana Worm is nothing to be ignored at all times. We the freaking like worst, most annoying mage card in the entire game. After Fireball, Polymorph, Pyroblast, pretty much everything else they've got. So <laughs> it's the it's the way of the mage, you know. Love them and hate them. I, I a while ago, these were in much of my older arena videos. But a while ago, I was saying, oh shoot, oh, Storm by Commando, that's actually really good. I mean, sucks that it kills our guy, but I would be more than happy to say uh, goodbye to our Bloodsail Raider right now. Is it better to actually use a weapon on him, though? We still have so much health, and it would be nice to give him something on board to be a big ol' irritation. So let's actually use our weapon. Completely changed my mind about what, what we were going to do right there. Just keep whacking him in the face. You could argue that we could use our weapon to uh, hit him in the face and we will have done two extra damage and actually healed for more health. That way we, we simply took two damage because of the, the heal mixed in there as well. But I, I hate it when people use weapons to attack the hero unless it's going to like guarantee a kill or if they're like at like 12 health or something like that or if you're a rogue and you've got your freaking hero power that keeps on bringing it up i don't know there are cases when i like it cases where i hate it speaking of stuff i hate water elemental's a big old donkey dong could go for the Mad Bomber Hope for getting really good luck, but I think that's a foolish choice. I think it's time to put out our Guardian of Kings, which is actually, I think, going to be a very, very good play for us for a number of reasons. Uh, obviously, it will heal us. It doesn't get the full effect of the heal once again, only brings it to uh, brings us back to 30, and that freeze should go away now? Oh, no, I mean, it'll go away by next turn, of course. But, uh... But basically, what I'm really hoping, he could use a fireball, which would ruin my plan. But my big hope was that he would use a polymorph on him, so that we can hope that he won't have a polymorph to use on our Sunwalker in the future. Because polymorph, polymorph and Hex are basically the ultimate counters to a Sunwalker. Okay, that's... Ah, knew it was one of the two, had to be the, the, the lesser of two evils. That's unfortunate. Get in there and fight, maggot! Oh no! <laughs> He's gonna buff a minion for a turn. Let's see. I think this is a perfect Mad Bomber play. One of them could die from one hit, so might as well go for it. Probably won't get uh, too many better times in the future. Oh, Mad Bomber! You almost helped. I, I love, but hate you, my friend. Our, our freeze is still in effect, too. Crap, that's bad. Actually, did not realize that. There's absolutely no reason to play our cards now as well. Earthen Ring Farseer, Farseer would just be a pointless minion. Just to get additional board coverage. This turn really didn't work out. I, I thought for sure that our that the freeze wasn't going to last that long. That must have been that must have been changed, because I'm pretty for, pretty sure I've essentially done that in the past. Because he didn't use a spell that froze me. I hit him last turn, and it froze me all the way through this turn as well. I feel like that shouldn't be a thing, but whatever. I I, I guess it makes sense. Ooh, Ezra Drake coming out. Good thing is we can kill him next turn. 
Best case scenario, he trades minions, but he's almost certainly going to hit me directly. I'm still mad at you, Mad Bomber. You betrayed me. You used to be my friend. Oh, that's the worst thing that could have come out there. So now we're going to take a big old bunch of damage. We have two Consecrations in this deck. This would be the best time to draw one. Blessing of Kings, not exactly what I wanted. Okay, looks like it's gonna be the Sun Sunwalker at this point, comboed with our weapon. That Azure Drake needs to be taken out of here. Honestly, we still have some good cards in our hand. Uh, Earthen Ring Farseer actually is not all that good. And actually, Defender of Argus isn't all that good in this situation. All we would do is buff the Sunwalker, or like if, if we put... Oh, okay, so, okay, so he doesn't have a polymorph. That's a good thing. He still can kill it by trading for those two guys, though. Which is a big old bummer. And it looks like he's gonna do that. Crap. I hate to harp on this, but Mr. Oh. Mad Bomber, if you had just worked out, then we'd still have that Sunwalker on the board. Probably not. We're dealing with a mage. Mage is... He almost, he, she almost certainly has a spell that she could have comboed with that, but, you know, I have a grudge. <laughs> I have a grudge, and I'm gonna hold that grudge forever now. Uh, Iron Beak Owl, not good in this case, because obviously that, uh, that Enrage is gonna be completely pointless. So I think we actually start putting down a Defender of Argus combo. We'll hold on our weapon, not use it now, because there isn't really much of a point until that guy's within killing range. No so we'll heal ourselves for three. Feathering Farseer goes down, and then I guess we just buff these two. Not really all that impressive. You would think... Oh, actually, I could... Duh, I couldn't have used Blessing of Kings as well. I was gonna say, you'd think I could combo that with Blessing of Kings, but no. So this gives us two options. Obviously, unless he uh, she uses any spells, she'll have to hit one of these two. Almost certainly go for the beefy one first, which means that we could either use a weapon, or we'll probably just throw the Silverhand Recruit into him. Two minions for one is not a good trade at all. But that's the power of a Spiteful Smith. It's a really damn good card. And in all honesty, Holy Nova isn't that bad just means we're gonna be using our weapon to kill it instead. Crap! That's ferocious, though. Hmm. Knife Juggler! You have been useful earlier as well, but not really now. I think we still have to play him, though. We have to play him in hope, because we can place two cards. We have to play him... Oh, shoot! No, we've got the silence! Okay. That changes things. Only question is, does that actually change which one we sacrifice? I think it does. I think it means we sacrifice the Defender of Argus just to keep the taunt on the board to keep that Boulderfist Ogre at bay. So Knife Juggler goes first, so we still have the knife hit. This time, we're actually gonna really hope that it doesn't hit the Spiteful Smith. Although, if it does, maybe we could do some kind of Blessing of Kings combo. Let's see how this works out. Get silenced, hits him. That means we could kill him with that guy. Okay, change of plans. Uh, we'll go ahead and buff you. Oh, and he survives now! Yes! Yes! Say goodbye to your Boulder Fist Ogre Fiend. Okay, so we have the absolute worst um, flame strike bait. So while it pains me a little bit because obviously he'd have to plow through my guy. I think we need to take him out. Actually, yeah, 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 we needed to take him out there because if he plays a flame strike now, he would be able to deal four damage to me for free. Wow, he actually doesn't have a flame strike. We're very. Oh no. No! <laughs> no, just as bad. Uh. Well, the one good thing is we saw that coming, I suppose. Now the only question is, do we hit that guy with a Stormwind Knight? Honestly, the... See, I'm torn here, because my reason thinking why we wouldn't want to hit him is because it's kind of pointless, seeing as we won't be able to kill him. But I also feel like we should hit the minion, because he's still... He only used one fireball. Well, she. We decide we're gonna call it a she. She only used one fireball, so... For the king! 
so she could kill it with a fireball or a pyro, uh... I mean, well, she could kill it with a pyro blast, but that would be oh, no. stupid. Uh, let's just go for the hit. I don't know. But if she if she uses a fireball or a polymorph on the Stormwind Knight, I'm going to regret that move. But, you know. Oh, Mad Bomber. Oh! We got... I am Some sorry. serious luck with that Mad Bomber. Apparently, we're not the only ones who have a, a traitorous Mad Bomber, so that's nice. God damn. Water Elemental is such a goddamn good card. Nice thing to know there, though, unless he... Oh, no, he wouldn't trade for it. Oh, shoot. Okay, so True Soldier Champion has to go out. We're actually gonna take down the... the oh, this is so bizarre. It actually might be good to hit the water... No, because then he just will, will keep on hitting me directly. What is best here? Two... Four I think we need to take out the one of the water ele elementals. Dealing with two of them is going to be unbearable. But we don't guarantee ourselves an extra turn because the way that the freeze works now... Th this is why freeze shouldn't work this way. The way it's working out currently. Because what's going to happen right here is to make sure that he doesn't get my character in a permanent freeze lock, I'm taking out one of his frost elementals. But that doesn't work because I'm not going to be able to take out that one next turn or do anything to try to take out that one next turn. Because, um, on my next turn, I'm still going to be frozen. Even though, technically, the turn that I froze myself on ended. So, at least the way that I think it works, it, I shouldn't be frozen. But, I don't know. I, I, I didn't create the game, so... Consecration's actually pretty helpful right here. Too bad it's not a little bit lower, but it's good to take out that uh, Mad Bomber before he deals additional damage to us. Might as well keep gaining out the little guys, but... Like I was afraid of, we're now gonna be stuck in that frozen lock, because our, our Silver Hand recruits obviously aren't going to be helping us at all, because Fire Blast will take him out every turn. I, <laughs> I was... <laughs> I was talking about the benefits of, um... Oh, no. This might... Yeah, I think this spells the end for us. Playing him down... Actually, might do a little bit for us. Not really, though. Just means the Abomination will attack him. Does mean we can protect our little guy, though, so who knows. Maybe we'll get some kind of buff. I think we still have... We don't have a, any more Blessing of Kings, if I remember correctly, but I think we do have a Blessing of Might in the deck still, so we might... Oh, oh unless he trades minions. Please, please trade... Damn you. God damn you. Unless we get a taunt, that's game. Even if we get a taunt, I'm pretty sure there's no coming back. Oh, <laughs> absolutely wonderful. Just what we needed at this time. Well played. Okay. The victory is yours. That was unfortunate. Freaking hate water elementals. If that if that was some, if if hmm, I don't know. I don't know how that could have worked out differently. Like, if that was a Fen Creeper, that that would have completely changed the game, because we wouldn't have had that uh, continued uh, freezing effect. But still, looking at the cards we drew at the end, there, um, and based uh, compared to the cards she drew, there was nothing we could have done at that point. Maybe earlier on, but there was probably some moves that we could have done earlier in the game to change things. Thankfully, our key doesn't change colors, though. When it was, like, forming, I, I thought we were losing this awesome diamond key, but nope. Get to keep our awesome silver key. So, obviously, now we reach the, the tense moment in in the arena that oh, it, oh, almost always has to come. Uh, of course, unless you get those 12 victories. But yeah, it's the point where you get to two losses. Worrying every second whether or not the, the next game's gonna be a loss. Apparently our decks our deck just can't do can't do mages. I wonder if it was the water elementals against the previous mage that kind of uh, doomed us in some regards. I don't think it was. I I don't even I don't think we even I don't think that mage even used a water elemental. But we're not dealing with a mage here, which at least makes me more confident. Mr. Zyku. 
Got a pretty bad hand right here. Iron Beak Gal could go out early, but it has the same amount of health as a Squire's. Granted, we aren't dealing with a hero power that could kill it, though. Unless, of course, they get the 1-1 one, one totem. Still, though, I think we're going to say goodbye to those two and hold on to the rest. Defender of Argus, Earthen Ring, Farseer aren't the best cards for early game, but uh, Mad Bomber's pretty good. Nice to see that true silver champion, too. When we're going, when we're going second, I'll be, uh, well uh, excuse me. I'll be more than happy to see these true silver champions pop up. Ah, Hammer of Wrath, happy to see you as well. Hammer of Wrath really will have helped us in that last game. Too bad uh, he didn't decide to show up. Be the 1-1, one, one, the 1-1. One, one. Ah, healing totem. What do I play now then? In all honesty, healing totem kinda doesn't want me to play the reinforce. Because Mad Bomber is very likely to be pointless. Next turn we have three mana though, so we could place out the true silver champion. I think we still play the Mad Bomber. It's not the best play in the world to be sure, but who knows, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll hit him directly. Hitting him directly would be valuable as well to get those damage points. Ugh, horrible trade. That was a mistake. Horrible trade. Obviously, it could have been worse at, like, if, um, what am I saying? Obviously, it could have been worse if he, if we had minions on the board and they got killed for it. Oh, shoot. Flame Tongue Totem this early. Thank you, my good sir. I mean, obviously, he just traded uh, a minion for an ability power, but I'm going to kill that thing right now, and that's a very strong card to have on the field. And it actually heals me back to full health, so that's pretty damn cool. Let's, uh, let's actually think about the value worth that happened there. Um, ignore hero- we're gonna ignore hero power costs, because that's just two mana for, for a minion on the board. I placed down one card, lost zero health in the process, he lost one, he placed down one card as well, correct? Yeah, so nice- okay, so he traded one for one, but I still have this on the board. Wait, wait, was he- Unbound Elemental? In my whole process of thoughts, I totally lost track of what he was actually doing. Strange play, to say the least. I don't think... He, he might be a little bit desperate, I'm, I'm starting to think, because I think an Unbound Elemental is not a good uh, play in that in that turn. Not entirely happy with the Earthen Ring Farseer play there, because I much rather prefer to play him when um, I could actually heal myself. But... Hmm, it's also a... Sp Especially sucky here because there's no way to kill that dude without sacrificing two things. Azure Drake was actually a surprisingly annoying play here. I think we're actually just gonna use the Defender of Argus to take that thing out. Mm. That means we're using a three cost to get rid of a five, although he did also get a card for that, so it's still, I think, an okay trade for him. Very irritating that it had to work out this way. If we only had one more mana. This actually would have been perfect, but it didn't work out that way. As always, when playing against shamans, at least uh, following my line of thought, even in that situation, um, I, I think it's better to attack him directly. Now I'm wishing we had that, that silence on the board. Ah, but True Silver Champion is actually going to be pretty good as well. Do we Hammer of Wrath instead, though? I think we do. Because then we could actually also Argent Commando this dude. I, I actually, it doesn't matter regardless. This way we would just be getting the card draw. I still think it's better though, just because this counts for one additional damage. This is three exactly. So it makes more sense to do it this way than the alternate. Ah, Acidic Swamp Boost! That'll be really good if we see any of the Shaman weapons come out, especially the Doom Hammer. Freaking hate the almighty and powerful Doom Hammer, one of my, my favorite things in this freaking game. So the good thing for us uh, so far that's been going on is we've definitely be been getting more value out of our cards than he has, but he's still actually been holding pretty well for himself. We've only dealt that one damage to him. Uh, card draw. He's gotten so many card draw opportunities. I mean, he's only had two, but, you know, I still count that as a lot. <laughs> for this point, this early in the game, that actually is quite a lot. Usually don't see that much around. No! No, my poor defender of Argus. <laughs> no! 
Surprised he did that trade, though, in all honesty. Oh, not with two Feral Spirits, though. I think we gotta pull out the Consecration. I think this is a good time for Consecration. Kills most of his board. Doesn't kill the Harvest Golem clone, though. Is there anything better? I don't... I don't think so, because we really want to wound those Spirit Wolves as well. And I think wounding those Spirit Wolves are, is the really big value that we're going to be getting out of this. If we had 8 mana on this turn, once again, if we only had one more mana crystal, this turn would be much, much better. But, uh, them's the break sometimes in the Hearthstone world, so let's go ahead and do that. Also means he can't heal the Harvest Golem. Uh, I don't think it's a very good card to take at all, but, um, shamans do have that, I think it's ancestral healing, isn't that what it's called? Um, basically a card that, uh, returns a minion to full health and give it taunt, and, and gives it taunt. I think that actually will have worked very well, played on that Harvest Golem there, so that prevents him from doing that, and stopped that, uh, flesh-eating ghoul from getting that, uh, a huge buff that he would have otherwise. Sucky thing here, that guy is gonna get buffed like mad, and there isn't really much we could do about it. Noble Sacrifice will help, though. It doesn't kill him in one hit, but could kill the Spirit Wolf in one go. So the question is, what do we play now? I honestly kind of don't want to play the Sunwalker at this point. But I think it actually might... S Let me think. Is that still the best option? Could also go noble, sa noble Sacrifice just to be extra safe. Because that should protect his shield. No, it won't protect his shield, but it'll protect his life. Let's go, Let's actually go ahead and do that. Means he'll be in... Uh, means this next turn should be very irritating for him in, in how he deals with this. I think that was our best play there. My other alternate would either be a True Silver Champion play, which I actually don't think would have been best, because then that spirit will... Uh, then... All we would have been able to do would be kill that spirit wolf, and he would have just chilled like that. I think second thing I would have done would have been no no mission inventor, like his play was right there. Okay, so the spirit wolf is down, down for the count. Super good, because that means unless he gets rid of that divine shield, fleshing ghoul is going bye bye next turn. Could also hit him with our weapon, but I I don't think that's smart. Oh yes, and he didn't get a. He didn't get, um, the tome he would have wanted. I think we get rid of the shield in favor of killing that. I was originally going to say the Gnomish Inventor, but we won't get rid of, uh, anything with, uh, Enrage. Enrage is a very, very, very frustrating thing to face. But as always, play it safe. Go for the card draw, card draw first if you're playing a card draw play. Nice card to have. Not really ideal in this situation. True Silver Champion comes out! Let's get this action started! Your minions shall perish, my 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 good old adversary. Next turn, if he does find a way to get through the Sunwalker, we can actually get a very, very buffed Gnomish Inventor, and with that four health, a four five I mean a five four is pretty damn fierce. That's actually essentially a booty bay bodyguard, uh, disregarding the taunt. Ugh, god damn you. <laughs> Why all the Azur Drakes? I was going to say, thank, uh, thankfully, that means that's the last one in his deck, but this is the arena! Anything goes in the arena. Okay. He... Actually, it makes perfect sense that he would do that. And now he can kill my guy! No! Crap! We actually should have played Blessing of Might there. Never would have guessed! Now we actually have to really hope for- Oh, no! No way! Crap, we messed up big time. That's really bad for us, actually. Okay. I think we use a Blessing of Wisdom on his dragon, so we won't want to attack with that. Uh, we kind of have to take down his taunt. He could just summon a new one next turn, but I think we have to do it. So let's... let's... It doesn't matter if we use our weapon first, because we're gonna heal Lord two Justice. anyways. But let's just attack first, uh, regardless. And then we can place the Guardian of Kings. Would there be any point in using Blessing of Might? Oh no, we can't use it on the little guy. Never mind. Okay, so the little guy comes out as well. 
We're, we we gotta really hope he doesn't get another taunt. Uh, another taunt totem. Or taunt creature, for that matter, I suppose. Uh, that wasn't a hex. Oh, a frost elemental. Okay. That's interesting. Is that, it is actually very, very annoying, because we're not gonna be able to kill that thing <laughs> the next <laughs> turn. We do get rid of its buff, though. Oh, no! The freaking Gnomish Inventor's gonna be healed every turn now. Crap! When was it that this round turned around? Round turned around. That was a fun thing to say. Nice that he's giving me card draw, though. I honestly think that's a mistake. I mean, he knows that I have buff cards, and he's afraid of that, obviously. But I still think that was a foolish move there. Uh, Stranglethorn Tiger will be very nice for us, because that is stealth! Let's get rid of his damage in regards to that thing. It's gonna be very, very irritation. I mean, very, very irritation. Very, very irritating, chilling on the field. Strangathorn Tiger comes out. Kinda wanna buff him, but there's no point in doing that now. Because he's just gonna die next turn, uh, killing the Frost Elemental. Unless we actually can have our Guardian of Kings attack him. That would be a much smarter way to handle things. Yeah. This is why it was better to hold on to that, so we could see what we're facing up against in the future. Presumably, based on that play, he's actually going to attack me directly. Um, with the rest of his minions. I would imagine he would not want to trade at this point, seeing as he has such strong crap. He might have just won! That is, uh, oh, god damn it. That's 15 damage right there, 10. He didn't win, but he's gonna get very, very close. No, he did win! Okay, well played, my good sir. <laughs> to the exact amount to kill us, that is so frustrating! My god! He completely steamrolled us. See, that, that, that though, that explains my reasoning why you actually always go for board clear against a shaman when you have the opportunity. Hopefully I didn't actually not do that at any point, because I'd be making a complete fool of myself now. But I think I did that whenever I could have, and I know I, I made the point of not doing that at least once. Um... Because you don't want this to happen. <laughs> you don't want him to one turn kill you. Well, that technically wasn't a one turn kill because we weren't at 30 health, but you guys know what I'm talking about, so. Wow. I always hate it when you're doing really, really well in an arena and then it all just kind of falls apart with like one big old series of losses, but fun to see what we got uh, nonetheless. Oh no, 20 arcane dust, that sucks. But 160 gold is, of course, more than worth it to get our, our arena's worth, or even more so in that regard. Let's see what we got in our pack! Might as well open this boy up. Open it up nice and fast. <laughs> I don't know what that was. And I apologize for it. Give me a legendary! Holy cow, we got a legendary! Yes! I'm the world's biggest nerd, but I'm... Happy! Oh man, that's gonna be awesome. A legendary, a rare, and rest rares. That's to be expected with a legendary in the pack. Oh man. A mana tie totem, too. I think I already had two of those, but that's nice to have. G give me like King Crush or Onyxia, something like that, please. Or Nat Pagel. I don't know what you guys know, but Nat Pagel is like considered the most overpowered card in the game right now. So he'd be pretty cool. Millhouse Mana Storm. Well, he's fun, <laughs> to say the least, but obviously he is a very, very risk-reward based card with his uh, battle cry. Play him against a, a mage, you're just asking to get uh, get your butt whooped. But uh, still, a good, cool card to have nonetheless. I do not have a, a Millhouse Mana Storm, so it'd be super cool to add him to my collection. The only other uh, legendary I have is, um... Uh, actually, I should keep that a secret, since that's gonna be in a video that I'll post at some point. Who knows, maybe it'll actually come out before this one, but I'm kind of holding on to that video for a rainy day. Uh, since I'm here, I might as well see however much arcane dust we get for this, but, um, oh, only 10. Slowly working my way to a free legendary and all that jazz. But anyways, I think that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like, a comment, and or subscribing if you have not. I am the Egg Scrambled Gamer, and I will see you all next time.